Welcome to today's Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray, serving as a pastor at Calvary Life Family Worship Center in Cheshire, Connecticut. We're glad you're with us today for this devotional. We're continuing in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 1. Our story continues from the previous book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel. And now we're going to read at verse 1. Now it came about after the death of Saul that when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, that David remained two days in Ziklag. On the third day, behold, a man came out of the camp of Saul with his clothes torn and dust on his head. And it came about when he came to David that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, From where do you come? And he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of, Saint, of Israel. Now we note here that David anxiously seems to inquire of this gentleman who arrives and has escaped from Israel's war, and he is deeply concerned, which also reflects that he still had a concern for Saul, his family, and the nation of Israel. Later on, David asks him about this situation, and when he asks him, he tells him that Saul has been killed, Saul's sons have been killed, Israel has, many in Israel have died, also many have fled. So David inquires from the man about the death of Saul. How do you really know that Saul and his sons are dead? And this is the response of the man in verse 6. The young man who told him said, By chance I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, and behold, Saul was leaning on his spear. And behold, the chariots and the horsemen pursued him closely. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. And I said, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. Then he said to me, Please stand beside me and kill me, for agony has seized me because my life still lingers in me. So I stood beside him and killed him because I knew that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown which was on his head and the bracelet which was on his arm, and I have brought them here to my Lord. Now, I, I am strongly suspicious that this Amalekite thought that he was doing David a great favor. Another interesting point is that the man who killed Saul was himself an Amalekite, among the people that God had told Saul he needed to eradicate. And he ends up dying at his hands. So David was not pleased at all with what the Amalekite had done. In fact, his response was quite the contrary. I think the Amalekite probably expected a reward. However, the Amalekite was about to lose his life. And David rebuked him and told him, how dare you Take the life of the one who is anointed by God. And then he commanded a young man to take his life. And it says that he told this young man in verse 16, David said to him, Your blood is on your own head, for your mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. I want to encourage you here today that we need to leave revenge in God's hands. David had been pursued by Saul for years, and his life was always in jeopardy because of Saul. But he did not rejoice in Saul's demise. He did not rejoice in his death. In fact, quite the opposite. He, in fact, the way that he responded would bring a unity to the nation years later. So I want to encourage you to leave revenge in the hands of God and show grace in the matter of those who oppose us over our journey in faith. Let me pray with you about this. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in a culture that seems to be gripped with a desire for revenge, always wanting to get back or, or pay back what somebody has done to us. Lord, let us be able to, to rest securely and that your love and your sovereign power is well equipped to deal with our defense. Lord, we put it in your hands and we ask that you would help us in, the, in this matter so that you might be glorified and that you might be honored in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 
Well, God bless you and thank you for listening to today's Pastor's Perspective. In the latter part of this same chapter, in our next perspective, we're going to see a little more detailed description of how David responds. I want to encourage you to be with us for that. It's very important that you do so. God bless you and have a great day.